Hi there, and welcome to my third video. Um, in this video, I'm going to go through the uh, four default textures that come bundled with the character, and also I'm going to show you how to import a new character uh, that will use the same character controller and the animations. Um, this is in case you uh, wish maybe to modify the character in any way, or um, simply bring in a new character and you want it to run on the same controller. Okay, so let's start with the uh, the materials. They are in the assets and materials, and the main character material is called uh, char underscore mat or character underscore mat. Um, the shader is the Toon uh, TF2 uh, shader. It's written by James O'Hare, and it can be found on the uh, uh, the Unity Wiki. So the uh, four different variants are. Um, I'll probably name these, but they'll be in this uh, in this location, and there'll be uh, four variants, just different color schemes. And to uh, to see the variants, you click on the character material, and then you simply drag uh, the diffuses into the diffuse slot change. Now, uh, if it's allowed, I'm not sure yet, I've not submitted, but um, I'm up for uh, doing bespoke textures, so if you, if anyone buys this <laughs> asset and they would like different textures for their character, maybe they want a logo on the back of the um, jacket, or maybe they want some crazy colour scheme, maybe they want the character to have pink hair, bright green top or whatever I, I don't I don't I don't know what you might want but I'll be happy to uh, do that for a, a small fee it, it won't take me too long to do okay so now I've shown you the textures I'm going to show you how to uh, import a new character and get it running on the character controller I'm going to be using uh, this character her name's Kiko, and she was made for a client earlier this year. Um, his name's Grant Moore, and uh, he's uh, at Combo Mash on uh, Twitter. And his website is um, www.combomash.com. He had this character commission for his uh, indie game, Paul Force One. And there she is. So thank you for letting me uh, use her, and uh, let's uh, let's go from there. So the first thing I needed to do was export that character as an FBX. I'm not going to go into how I did that because that will be different for every program. Um, so you'll need to go and find the relevant uh, tutorials or documents for that uh, for that program if you're not already uh, sure of how to do that. But I exported her with a, a skeleton that um, will work with Mechanim, and again. There's plenty of documentation on uh, on what that needs, what hierarchy is required. So let's bring her in. I'm going to go to assets and characters, and I'm going to import her. Oh, I've already done it. I'm going to delete that one. <laughs> okay, import new asset. Click on my FBX, and in she comes. There's her mesh preview. Go to animations. Uncheck import animation. Go to rig. Where it says animation type, I'm going to change that to humanoid. Click apply, and then go to configure just to check that um, everything has gone well with the mapping. Okay, now you can see um, it didn't. <laughs> it was close, but because there's uh, some non. Uh, slightly unusual topology with this character, uh, sorry, slightly unusual skeleton hierarchy, I think because of the ponytails, it's got a little bit confused. You can see on uh, this this mapping diagram here, the neck is greyed out, so I'm just going to fix that. So I click on head, and then neck here is greyed out, it's got none, no bones selected. So I'm going to click there, and then find my neck. That's messed up the head because uh, that's where the neck was originally assigned. So click there, change that to head, and I think everything is good to go now. Click up 
apply, click done, and uh, that character is um, ready to bring into the scene. And there she is. So now to add the control to her, I click her in the hierarchy, add component, scripts, KBH character controller states. That's the script for the third person controller. And that will automatically add all the scripts that you need uh, to get this working. So there's the animator. I need to change that in a moment. There's the character controller. Um, there's the jump boost script, which is the script I talked about in the second video. Uh, I've still not gone through the graphs, and I'll do that in a uh, forthcoming video. The push script, this will simulate physics because the character controller is default, won't have any physics um, sort of attached to it. This simulates physics so that the character can push around rigid bodies. The raycast height, this script is needed to um, calculate when the character is falling. Rotation monitor, this script um, <laughs> monitors rotation so that when the character is standing still and you rotate, whether it be with the mouse or with A and D, the feet will shuffle. And then the character controller states script. So I'm just going to change the uh, collision on the character controller. <coughs> there we go. And um, then I'm going to go to the animator. I'm going to place the controller here with the third person animator. So in animation, KBH, character control, third person, I'm going to drag that to the controller slot. There we go. Now I'm going to select the original character. And then copy his name. And delete. And I'm going to paste that original name to this new character. Now, this is important, this character needs to be called character, um, otherwise some of the scripts on the camera will break. Um, it's only it's only the idle camera, uh, in the, at the moment if you wait 80 seconds, um, the camera will start to turn around. I think that would break unless this character is called character. So go back to the character cam, and there'll be two things you need to fix. Under KBH cam script, uh, there is a target which will have missing because you've just deleted it. Drag the new character there into that slot. And then in idle cam, again, target missing. Drag that character into there. And click play. And there we have it. We have the mesh. Um, this is obviously not textured. But we have the, uh, the meshing game and all the animations will be working and the character controller will be working. You can see that some of uh, some of the animations aren't working quite as intended that's because the animations were created for the previous male character and uh, so they are making a hands clip for example. So um, that's why ultimately I'd love to have bespoke animations for every character. Hopefully I'll be able to get that on the library. Um, the one thing that will be broken will be the jumps. You can see she's not actually managing to jump up here. And that's because where the two graphs are set, run curve and walk curve, there is nothing set at the moment. But I will go through that in uh, my next video. Hi there, I'd just like to do a quick edit. There were a few things that I saw uh, wrong with the character that I wanted to go through and not necessarily fix but just to show you um, where to look for uh, potential errors and uh, how you might uh, possibly be able to fix them. Now uh, some of the problems with the character were the uh, the animations are clipping so you can see in her idol her hands are clipping into her skirt and also if I look on the character her fingers are they seem they seem like there's something wrong there. Um, so to have a quick look to see if there's anything we can fix, select the character in the 
assets, characters, Kiko Test in her case, but uh, whatever you've named your character. Go to Rig and then click Configure. And then um, there was something wrong with the fingers, uh, it seems so anyhow. So if you click on the mapping, you've got body, head, left hand, right hand. You can click on the left hand. And I'm just going to check the joints. Everything uh, seems to be okay. It's been uh, listed as okay. But when I look down at the joints that it's assigned, it's uh, assigned left finger metacarpal, and it's done that for each of the fingers. Now if I click on here to see the joints that I could uh, potentially assign to to this uh, to this joint, I've got joint one, two, and three, and metacarpal. Now I suspect I'm not going to do it. It's quite time consuming, but I suspect that if I uh, redo these by hand, that will fix the hand problem. Um, now regarding the animation clipping, um, really you do want to have animation be spotly made for the character, but it's not always possible because of budget. Um, in Mechanim, they have a great feature called Muscles. Now, what that does is, if you have a character, you can uh, see the extents of the, uh, the movement range of the character. So this is an extreme how far the character could move. And uh, as well as having these these overall settings just to preview, um, you can also go to the per muscle settings, and you can uh, you can tweak certain settings. So I'm going to go to just to, as a quick fix to see if it will work. I'm going to go to the left arm. I'm going to go to the arm uh, up and down, and to stop it clipping into the body at its lower extent, I'm just going to change that to uh, minus 30 to uh, just to see how it looks. Uh, click apply and done. Now that was too much but you can see how I've brought the arm uh, out of the body and uh, there we go. It, it does work, it works a lot better than it did previously. It's gone a bit far. Minus thirty was a bit too much, but you can tweak these settings to uh, to get your feel. Um, also, there's a few sort of miscellaneous settings at the bottom, such as feet spacing, uh, leg stretch, arm arm stretch. Just play around and see uh, how they look, and um, you might find a setting that will work with your animation set uh, a lot better than the defaults. Um, it's a little bit of a bodge, but it can it can it can help. So just with wider feet, this might look. Uh, <laughs> that's a bit silly. That's a bit too much. But uh, you can see <laughs> it can uh, it can affect it quite a bit. So uh, yeah, just just letting you know that those options are there.